This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, my name's Alexa Ray. And welcome to another video. Welcome to my physical TBR video. Guys, this has been such a highly requested video on my channel for the past few months and I've tried to refrain from doing this video for so many reasons. One of them being I have a huge book shopping addiction on my channel. If you guys have been around for a while, you already know. We go book shopping like so much on this channel. I buy so many books every single month. I'm always doing book hauls, bookstore vlogs. I have a problem and I'm aware it's definitely a me problem. I am not doing anything to fix that problem because I love buying books. So I am going to be sharing with you guys my physical TBR list. If you don't know what that is, I'm basically going to be going through every single book in my library that I have not yet read that is on my overall TBR list. I'm hoping to read these books by the end of the year. That being said, I have, I have a lot of unread books in my library, guys. Like, I think I haven't made this video because I'm so embarrassed. I have so, so many books. Okay, let's just, let's try to cover that up. I have so many books on my TBR list that I'm going to be sharing with you guys today. We're just gonna go through, maybe talk a little bit about some of them and just kind of fly through most of them. I don't even know how many books we have here today. But yeah, that is what we're going to be doing today. I'm gonna to be showing you guys every book on my TBR list. I'm super, super excited and we have a lot of books to go through. So without further ado, let's jump in to my physical TBR. Before we jump in to my physical TBR, I just want to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Squarespace. Squarespace makes it super easy for creators and educators to monetize their content in a way that fits their brand. You guys already know from previous videos of mine how obsessed I am with Squarespace. I recently created my own website through Squarespace to basically create my own book blog where I leave book reviews, book ratings, to be read list, books I didn't finish reading, and really overall just rate and review books that I've recently read for you guys. I also have a tracker on it to track all the books I've read this year. My yearly goal for 2022 is to read 50 books and we're actually like more than halfway there but I really love having like this little book blog because it helps me keep track of like all the books I've read this year and like what books I liked what books I didn't like and it's also just like a really cool place for you guys to go to get like all the extra book content that you might miss over on my channel on my Instagram sometimes when I do reading vlogs or book reviews on my channel I don't touch on every single point that like I really want to touch on so you guys can go catch up on like all the extra stuff I may have missed on my channel it's just a super fun an easy place to go to get all of my extra book related content. With member areas, you're able to unlock a new revenue stream for your business. Free up time in your schedule by selling access to gated content like classes, online courses, or newsletters. You're also able to gain powerful insights into who's visiting your site as well as how they're interacting with your content, which I think is so beneficial as a creator to see how your audience is interacting with your content. It just lets me know what content you guys really are enjoying and what content you're not really enjoying, and it just helps me create like the best content for you guys. Their analytics include page views, traffic sources, time on site, most read content, audience geography, and more. And then of course, my overall favorite part of my Squarespace website is that I'm able to directly connect my social media to my website. So it makes it super easy for you guys to just click on the Instagram or the YouTube icon and it will directly take you over to those social medias. I just love that feature so much because everything is in one place. It's super easy for you guys to stay connected with me on other social media platforms. You guys can head over to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch you can go to squarespace.com slash alexa ray to save 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or domain thank you so much again to squarespace for sponsoring today's video and without further ado let's jump in to my physical tbr okay so my physical tbr i have so many books on my physical tbr guys again i've said it like 20 times already i'm so sorry but like i have refrained from doing this video for so long because i am actually embarrassed I don't know why but I am and I shouldn't be these are all such amazing books that I am dying to read but like I can only read it so fast and like so many hours in a day especially with being in school again these are all amazing books for the most part 
I don't have like anything against any of these books. There's no major reason to why I haven't read these yet. I just haven't gotten to them yet. Like I could already see like so many books just like right here that I cannot freaking wait to read. I'm dying to read them. We are gonna jump right into this. I don't even know where to start with this. Like if you look at my bookshelves, they're literally freaking empty, guys. What? We are just gonna hop right in. The first book I have on my TBR list is One of Us is Lying by Karen McManus. This is actually a TV show on Peacock. A lot of you have raved about this book. This is a book that I am hoping to read this year, probably like in October because it's like a mystery type of thriller read. This is what the cover looks like. It looks kind of like, ooh. Next we have To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. I only have book one out of like the three book series. She is also the author of The Summer I Turned Pretty, which is like a huge show on Amazon now. And then this series is also like a Netflix film series, which I have seen. I love Laura Jean. She's so freaking cute. I haven't read this series yet just because like The Summer I Turned Pretty kind of put me in a reading slump. I was kind of nervous to read To All the Boys I Loved Before, but I loved the TV show and I loved the movie. So we have Finding Cinderella by Colleen Hoover. I literally hate real people on book covers. I'm so sorry it might be an unpopular opinion. So cringe to me. This is a novella though and it's part of the Hopeless series which if you guys have been around for a hot minute you know Hopeless by Colleen Hoover is like my favorite coho book of all time. I think it's so underrated. If you haven't read it it's amazing. We have Maybe Now by Colleen Hoover. This is the third book in the Maybe Someday series. I guys I didn't like Maybe Someday so I did not get to this yet. I don't know when I will. I did read the novella in between both books and it was like it was okay Okay, but I'm just not too I'm not too crazy about that series. We have book three in the Bridgerton series an offer from a gentleman and I originally got this because I am a Bridgerton fanatic on my channel. If you've been around for a hot minute you know this. I love Bridgerton. I love 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 me some Bridgerton. So I got book three in the series. I've read book one and two. I've loved it. I personally prefer the show over the books which I feel like is so weird and rare but I got book three thinking that season three was going to be about Benedict's story and it's actually not. So we have Losing Hope by Colleen Hoover. This is book two in the Hopeless series. Again, Hopeless is one of my favorite coho books. This is book two and it basically just tells the story from Dean's point of view. We have so many coho books. We have Layla and Without Merit. These are both giving me like spooky, creepy mystery vibes. So I'm saving these for the month of October. We have Conversations with Friends and Beautiful World, Where Are You? These are both by Sally Rooney. I am obsessed with this book cover. I think it's so pretty. I hear really, really good things about these books, but I tried to read Normal People and her writing style just, it wasn't it for me. So I haven't picked these up yet. I don't know when I will but I'm hoping to eventually. Next up, we have Most of All of You in More Than Words by Mia Sheridan. My favorite read of 2022 is Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. I preach about that book literally any chance I can because it is such an amazing, underrated book, I think. She has these two other books out and when I saw them at Barnes & Noble, I immediately had to pick them up. Definitely recommend Archer's Voice. We have The Cruel Prince by Holly Black, which is part of a book series. I only have book one. This is like one of the first books I picked up in the beginning of the year. I haven't read it yet. I hear amazing things and I can't wait to read it. Two Taylor Jenkins read books, One True Loves and After I Do. These are both highly requested books on my channel. I am obsessed with The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo so I have no doubt in my mind that I will be obsessed with these books as well. We have the first three books in the selection series which is another series that I am dying to read. I wanted to read this series in the beginning of this year and do like a whole reading vlog for it but like I just never picked it up. I was always picking up like other books before this so I hear really good things about these books. We Were Liars by E. Lockhart this book. I I hear so many weird things about this book. So many people say it's super slow and boring. So I've been too nervous to actually pick it up and give it a try. A lot of people say that I should give it a try though. And that when you hit the end of the book, it actually makes like a lot of sense and like it's really, really good. But I don't know if I want to wait until the end of the book to really enjoy the book. So I don't know when we'll read this. I am going to read it. I just don't know when. We have Good Girl, Bad Blood and As Good As Death 
said by Holly Jackson. These are both part of a Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. I did read book one like a few months ago. Absolutely loved it, so I decided to pick up book two and book three very recently. So these are books I am hoping to read in the month of October. Absolutely obsessed with Pip and her whole story. Hey, pile number two. We have The Kiss Quotient and The Truth About Love. These are both books that were sent to me by one of you guys, so thank you so much. Also obsessed with these covers. We have A Table for Two by Cheryl Lister. I have no freaking idea what this book is about. I have Maggie Moves On by Lucy Score. I actually have two copies of this book. One is like the pre-release for it, and then this one is the official release. This one I haven't read yet, but it's really cool. Whenever I go to Barnes & Noble, I always see this on their rom-com table. The next four books I have are also books that were sent to me by a publisher. Forever Publishing is known for publishing like strictly romance novels, and they send me some new books every month. We have How Sweet It Is by Dylan Newton. This is like like an opposites attract grumpy meat sunshine as seen on TV by Meredith Shore it also says that it's Gilmore Girls vibes on the cover so obviously I am going to be obsessed and love this book we have the Godparent trap by Rachel Van Dyken this book I've talked a little bit on my channel about I haven't read it yet but it sounds very very similar to a film that's on Netflix right now it's like an early 2000s film and I always think about that film and then we have the trouble with hating you this is one of my favorite favorite book covers in my library. I just think it's absolutely beautiful. A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Maas. This series. Guys, okay, I've had this book for far too long. I just need to suck it up and read it, give it a try. Again, it's a little bit out of like my comfort zone when it comes to reading. I've seen so many people read this series recently and absolutely love it, rave about it. We have the Spanish Love Deception. This was on my TBR list all summer. I never picked it up because I heard really mixed reviews. Some people loved it, some people didn't love it, but I do want to read it because I hear that Aaron Blackford is, he's just everything in book world. So next we have Fifty Shades of Grey by E.L. James. We all, we all know what this is about. I only read like a few chapters like a couple years ago and I never finished it. So it's still on my TBR list. The Paper Princess by Aaron Watt. This is book one in a book series and I really want to start this book soon. I hear amazing things about it. It sounds absolutely amazing. Also again, another one of my favorite book covers. Oh my gosh, no, this is one of my favorite, favorite book covers. Tell Me Three Things by Julie Bookson. This is so cute. It's so like simple and aesthetic. I love that it has the words in the background and it's a little like waffle heart. Like, come on. <laughs> In Five Years by Rebecca Surley. Again, mixed reviews. Some people love it, some people hate it. Virgin River by Robin Carr. This is a book series and also a Netflix series. I'm so obsessed with the Netflix show, guys. I have read this book, but I don't think I've finished it. Fallen to Me by Mila Gray. I picked this up a few weeks ago. I just loved like the aesthetic of the book cover and I personally don't like real people on book covers, but I like this book cover, so I picked it up because I thought that like was a sign or something I don't know but a lot of you had actually told me that it's part of a book series which is actually right here on the back. I don't know the proper order of this book series though. I don't know if these books are like standalones or if you have to read them like in order. So I haven't started this yet. Something Borrowed by Emily Giffen. This is like an early 2000s film that I was absolutely freaking obsessed with and I still am. Another Rebecca Surly book, One Italian Summer. This was like a super popular summer read this past summer and I actually got it like towards the end of summer. I got it from Target for 30% off so kind of seems like it's a tearjerker and I just wasn't I wasn't in the mood to cry you know what I mean look at the foil on the cover it's so pretty making my way downtown walking fast Stack number three has so, so many books that I cannot wait to freaking read this fall. We have book one in the Wicked Trilogy. I've seen this all over book talk and I've heard such amazing, amazing things about this book series. I, so I picked up book one a few weeks ago. The cover always gave me like mixed feelings. I didn't know like what to think when I saw the cover. We have Hush Hush by Becca Fitzpatrick. I 
don't know if I've ever seen anything on this book. I know that I picked it up originally because it just sounded like a super cool story. It's like a forbidden love type of trope. The cover is iffy for me though, kind of creepy. We have some more books from Forever Publishing. The Lost Children, I'm not too sure what this one's about. It looked kind of sad though. A Lady for a Duke by Alexis Hall. This gives me a Bridgerton vibe. We have Always Be My Duchess, which also gives me Bridgerton vibe, but maybe like a little bit more rom com -y. Daughter of the Pirate King. This I immediately picked up when I saw it because it says right on the cover, readers should rejoice because we now have a Lady Jack Sparrow on our hands. I was obsessed with Pirates of the Caribbean growing up. I feel like it was just like fate for me to see this book. We have another one of my all-time favorite book covers, Pride and Premeditation. This is a Jane Austen murder mystery. I'm a huge Jane Austen fan and so I just, I know I'm going to love this. This is so beautiful. We have Mr. Malcolm's List. I have not yet read this, but I've seen a lot about like the film that they're making for it. We have two Amanda Collins books, A Lady's Guide to Mischief and Mayhem and An Heiress Guide to Deception and Desire. She basically writes books that are based in like the 1800s, but they're like female led and female empowerment. So I absolutely love that. The French House by Helen Fripp. I do not know too much about this. I think it is another book though that like takes place in the 1800s. The Silent Patient, a book that I am hoping to read in early October. This is such a highly requested book on my channel. Cover just looks so creepy to me and the storyline just sounds so bizarre and wild. My Killer Vacation by Tessa Bailey. I I liked the cover of it. I don't know. I just thought it was like cool and like I like his tattoos. Another Tessa Bailey book, Hook, Line, and Sinker. This is book two in a series. The first one I read, it was It Happened One Summer. Absolutely loved that book, but it just was like a really slow build up for me. That's why I haven't picked up book two yet. But I am hoping to read it next summer because I really did love like the summery vibes in book one. So next up, we have two books that are on my October TBR. This is The Dead Romantics. I just picked this up because I thought the book cover was really cool but then when I actually like read what it's supposed to be about I thought it was like super weird but like really intriguing and then we have the X hacks this gives me like Sabrina the teenage witch vibes it gives me hocus pocus vibe it gives me bewitched vibes the cutest cover I feel like it's perfect for October and spooky season I have a sea glass summer this was sent to me by forever publishing definitely like a summery beachy type of read I have two very popular summer reads that I didn't get around to this summer. We'll get to them next summer though. Summer of Broken Rules by K.L. Walder and Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. If you've read either of these, let me know down below what your thoughts are. Book Lovers by Emily Henry. This book was highly requested on my channel. I read People We Meet on Vacation like back in like the beginning of the year, maybe like the springtime. I didn't like it. I just, I couldn't get into it. So I haven't picked up an Emily Henry book book since. But I picked this up literally like a few weeks ago because you guys rave about it. You say I should give her another chance. So still a little bit nervous to pick up another book by her because the last one I read like put me in such a bad reading slump. But I am hoping to give book lovers a try. And then we have Shatter Me. This is a super new book in my library. It's also part of a pretty big series I believe. I hear amazing things about this entire series. They're also like pretty short and quick reads. So I'm excited to read this. So this pile is probably my favorite pile and probably like the closest pile. Well, wait a second, minus these books. This pile though is probably like the closest on my TBR. Like these books are all at the top of my TBR list. The first two books I have are part of the Dreamland Billionaire series by Lauren Asher. I hear amazing things about this series. Book one is The Fine Print and book two is Terms and Conditions. These ones are actually on like my September and October TBR. Then we have three L. Kennedy books. These are part of her off-campus book series. I read book one, which was the deal last month, and literally, I don't know what took me so long to pick up this series. You guys have been recommending it since the beginning of my channel, and I finally picked up book one, and I can never go back now. Like, I am obsessed with it. I think I'm missing one. I am missing one. Actually, these books have to go in this pile too, because these are like at the top of my TBR list. Redo, I have four L. Kennedy books. Book two, which is on my September TBR, 
is The Mistake. This tells the story of John Logan and Grace. We have the score, the goal, and the legacy. These three books plus the deal tell like the romances of four hockey players. And then the last book in the series, which is The Legacy, kind of gives us like an insight into what their lives are like after they graduate college. Again, I was obsessed with book one. I don't know what took me so long to actually pick up the series. Next up, we have Twisted Lies. This is book four in the Twisted series by Anna Hong. This series is like my current obsession on my channel. I actually already started book four. I'm about 60 pages in. And this tells the story of Christian Harper and Stella. I'm obsessed with this book series, with these characters. I don't know what I'm gonna do when I finish book four and it ends because like I'm so invested in it and I don't want it to end. Next up, we have three books in the Addicted series, the most highly, highly requested series on my channel since day one. Addicted to You, book one. I finally was able to get my hands on it. We have Ricochet and Addicted for Now. Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. I cannot wait to read this. It's on my September DBR. So adorable. I'm also a huge like movie buff, so I feel like this is going to be so perfect. The Final Gambit by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. It is the third and final book in the Inheritance Games trilogy. You guys know, I've been around for a hot minute. The Inheritance Games has my heart. It's another one of those series that I just don't know what I'm going to do when I finish the last book. I don't know how I'm going to move on from the characters and the storyline. I am very surprised though because I hear very mixed things about the final book. Some people love it. Some people like don't like it at all. They're kind of upset with it. So I'm nervous, but I'm also just like so excited to see like what happens in the story. Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. This was sent to me by one of you guys. Thank you so very much. I wanted to read this for so long now. This book is like a pretty chunky book. So I'm kind of like intimidated by it. Shadow and Bone, I just picked this up the other day. It is a part of my branching out period in my life. I am trying to read different books, different genres. This is like a fantasy type of world. So I am so excited to give it a try. The Red Queen by Victoria Avard. This is everywhere. I've seen so many people read this book. I've seen it on book talk. I hear some weird things, but I hear amazing things. Book one in the Dirty Air series, another book by Lauren Asher. It's called Throttled. I've heard such amazing things about this series as well. I just picked it up the other day. I'm so excited because like the whole like theme and plot in this book just seems so different from most romances I've read. Oh my gosh, these books, guys. Guys, I'm so excited. So I picked up two books in a Never After series. Book one is Hooked and book two is Scarred. I don't want to say they're retellings. They're basically just like made up stories, but about like the villains in the Disney world. Book one is Hooked, so it's like a romance with Captain Hook. And then book two is Scarred, which I think is like a romance with Scar from like The Lion King. I don't know. I don't know too much about these books. I'm so excited for these books. Like I cannot wait. We have Other Birds by Sarah Addison Allen. This sounds so cute. I just got this in my book of the month box. And then of course, Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. It is her newest book release. She is also the author of The Love Hypothesis, which is like a huge, huge book talk book that everyone's obsessed with, including myself. I am absolutely freaking obsessed with Adam Carlson. Definitely one of my top book boyfriends is Adam Carlson. Last out of that pile is Midnight Sun. It's by Stephanie Meyer. I'm pretty sure this is part of the Twilight Saga and it's basically like told from Edward's point of view. I have not read or seen Twilight in so long, so many years. Okay, so we have like this idiot bitty book pile here. You know, I feel like it's probably another unpopular book opinion. I don't like books that are like this size, not pocket size, but like I think that's what they call it is pocket size books. The first two books I have are Nicholas Sparks books and I have The Notebook and A Walk to Remember. Then we have five books that Forever Publishing sent me. These are all very like Bridgerton type of vibey books. We have The Perks of Loving a Wallflower, The Helion and the Hero, The Duke Heist, and Nobody's Princess. Oh, and then I also have like this cute cute little summary. It's the Inn on Sweetbriar Lane. I love this because there's a little cat in the window. I also have the Summer Cottage which has 
cutest little dog here and kind of reminds me of Osiris. Return to Cherry Blossom Way. Again, another cutie little dog. The beachside bed and breakfast. Seems like a cute beach and summer read. And then we have The Rebel in the Rake, which is another one of those like Bridgerton vibey type of books. And then moving on to the final books in the TBR pile. We have Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is supposed to go like hand in hand with Daisy Jones and the Six, I believe, which I really, really enjoyed. So I'm hoping I enjoy this one. I hear like amazing things about this. Normal People by Sally Rooney. You guys, I already talked about this like really briefly. Really weird writing style for me. I don't know, kind of just wasn't doing it for me. I wasn't getting into this book because of the writing style. The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. This is a book I've had for so freaking long and I just have to pick it up and read it. It's an enemies to lovers trope. Everyone says it's like the best enemies to lovers book like out there. So I just have to pick it up. I have to give it a try because I know I'm going to be obsessed with it. You've Reached Sam. This book cover I think is so beautiful and just has like so much emotion in it. I have not read this yet because again, seems like a tearjerker. I'm not ready for that type of read right now. Girl in Pieces by Kathleen Glasgow. I don't know when I will read this book. I don't even know like too much about it. This is a book I think I've literally had since I was in high school. The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I love this book cover. I love that it's a hard cover. I think it's just so beautiful. This is another book that I believe I started but I didn't get too far into I just I think it was like a really weird read for me at first I think now I would definitely be able to get into it we have some book of the month books to finish off my TBR we have true biz the good left undone like a sister Hayaki and bittersweet okay everyone that is all for my physical TBR I hope you enjoyed it I hope you had fun I can't believe how many books that I have in my library that I haven't read yet I didn't even bother counting them because I don't want to know that number. If you guys saw any books in this video that you've read and that you absolutely love and cannot recommend enough, comment down below what those books are and please just like push me, convince me to read these books. And yeah, I just, I can't believe the nerve of me to go buying books. Like it's my business when I have probably over a hundred books here that I have not yet read. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up because it really helps me out. Let's me know that you like these types of videos. You like my bookstore vlogs, my TBRs, my reading vlogs, my book hauls, and all that super fun book related content. And then of course, don't forget to subscribe down below if you'd like to see more of me because I post every single week and sometimes I post more than once a week, twice a week. Kind of just depends on like how crazy life is at the time. But I love posting as much as possible for you guys and hanging out with you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day.